Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. So um, about six to eight months ago, I posted about my ayahuasca journey, which I experienced at Rhythmia in Costa Rica, and it was the most life-changing, profound experience that I've ever had. And you can go back and watch the videos. I have about four or five parts about my whole experience on the ayahuasca, everything that I experienced in the moment from the feelings, the purge, the leading up to what it felt like, what it looked like, what happened to my body. That is so in-depth in my previous videos, I have a playlist of all of them where I go through each night and what I learned, what were the downloads that I got, what did I feel, what was my interaction with people. So I'm not going to be getting into all of that today, um, except to just say that uh, it was extremely profound. And what I experienced in ceremony, I did four ceremonies, four nights in a row. On the fourth night, we did Yahe, which is ayahuasca, but from a different, it's from Colombia versus, you know, there's sort of other places. So it's a different version of the vine and it has a little bit of a different experience. So go watch the videos on that. Those are super in depth. And we're just going to kind of lightly talk about the overall initial feeling because I want to update everybody on what it's been like six months after doing the ayahuasca, which now I think I'm about eight months. I meant to make this video, but then I've been deep in the trenches of shadow work. And finally, I feel like I can start speaking on it because I have a little bit of a better understanding. So let's talk about my initial experience. When I initially experienced ayahuasca and my takeaway from the whole thing was I experienced oneness to such a level that coming back. So some of you guys only know me from the ayahuasca videos, but then other people who follow me on TikTok and have seen my journey and the information that I share know me to be someone who asks a lot of questions, answers a lot of questions, does a lot of research, breaks down a ton of topics. My brain and I have, if you guys are into astrology, I have my Mercury in Virgo. Makes sense why I'm very, uh, I'm good at all the data. My brain, sometimes I say, it feels like a filing cabinet. Like I could zip file and pull, retrieve a lot of information on different topics. But then it all kind of just sits there. And people would always ask, like, how do you remember so much? How does your brain work in this way? And not like in any way, like I'm a genius. There's so many people that are smarter than me. But it's just the way that I was able to retain a lot of information. And I had so many questions. And I think that's why I was such a seeker of information. And coming back from my ayahuasca ceremony, which I did in August of 2023, like I said, at Rhythmia in Costa Rica, and it was the best experience ever. When I experienced oneness, which I had never experienced, I was raised Catholic, but I never like really resonated that much. Like I never felt the love of God or the love of Jesus or any of those things. Like I just never felt anything about it. Like I believed there was a higher power. I believed I've always believed that there's something greater at work. But when people like said like, oh, I felt the Holy Spirit or I felt God's love or I felt God embrace me, zero. That is just something that I never experienced. And maybe that was part of the reason why I have been such a seeker and searcher and want to know about souls and lifetimes and aliens and all of this stuff, which is of, of a greater purpose to know about the universe, about consciousness and on that fourth night, not only leading up to that, because every night it was like my heart was opening more and more. And just that first night alone, I felt my heart heal because I had never felt that level of compassion. I never felt that level of compassion towards everyone and everything. Like literally people who have done the worst things to me in my life. I literally was like, damn, 
I wish that they could experience this healing and this love and heal them. I hope that they can experience it. That was the level of compassion, love, pure support of the universe. Like one of the shaman's helpers, when I purged, I had vomited, gave me a little piece of tissue to wipe my mouth. I couldn't even use the tissue. I just held it on my heart because it was the most, it's the sweetest thing anybody had ever done for me because of the place that I was in and just to feel another person's compassion at that point was life-changing. And feeling that full oneness was very similar to like feeling the love of God. Now, if you've watched the video about the Yahe night, when I, what I experienced was neutrality. It wasn't necessarily an abundance of love. On those other nights building up, I experienced an abundance of love. But on the fourth night when I was on the Yahe and I saw outside of this reality, it was just completely neutral. And I just saw that like every single thing, including the worst things that have ever happened, are the exact same thing as a miracle. And a miracle is this frequency of like, oh my God, this is meant to be. There is nothing else except the truth that this is meant to be and that it defies all odds. That is also bad things. They are meant to be in that way. And that was the impression that I got, the experience that I got. And then my friend recently told me to check out this clip of Neil Brennan, who I was not that familiar with, um, on Joe Rogan recently. And he talked about how on ayahuasca and on DMT, he experienced before the big bang, which is what I experienced. <laughs> I experienced before the big bang and then the process of it, which was a breath, the universe breathing in. And then like, you know, when you're doing breath work, how there'll be prana, like people kind of hold at the top to like, you know, charge the, the prana. So it's like, you take a big breath and you hold that top and there's this kind of peace stillness on top before, you know, you exhale and breathe it out. And that's what I saw is before the big bang and then God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, took a breath, the first breath. And that breath expands, expands, expands. And I saw all the way to the top of this breath was going to be like the full expansion of the universe. And there was going to be this point at the top that is just stillness in a way. Sometimes when they talk about prophecies, how there'll be like this time of great peace, a thousand years of great peace after these time of upheavals, whether you believe in that or not is regardless, that's the feeling of what it was, was this like time where there will be stillness and it will be that peak at the top of the breath work and then there'll be a breath in and that's what i started to experience was the breath in before there was nothing again and as we got closer to it being nothing again that's when i started to freak out and was like please mother aya please let me know that if i'm coming back if i'm gonna be jen again am i gonna live i can't remember how to be me anymore like please let me manifest myself back into a reality and live again like i please don't end. And Neil Brennan talks about that experience, which I just saw the clip yesterday, that he said that after that, for 18 months, he stayed in a state of like, kind of being too big in the thought, like at that level of oneness. It was so interesting because I also experienced before the Big Bang and had the same thing. So my initial feeling was this was the highest high and not like high of drugs. I've been higher, to be honest with you. <laughs> but um, the highest high of love, of understanding, of compassion, of pure acceptance, of this is what it is. Everything is perfect. There is nothing wrong. There is no mistakes. Everything is exactly the way it needs to be. And the universe is exactly perfect in all the ways that it's playing out. So I came back to my real life with that concept. And that is not great for someone who's a seeker. Because then my drive to seek new information and to understand was gone. Like, I don't need to understand. I understood. I felt it. 
I got this download, which these are all in those videos, so you can go back and watch the long form. But after I had that whole experience, I was sitting there looking at the stars and I was like, oh, remember is not to remember your past lives. It is not to remember your soul's mission. It's not to remember who you truly are. Remember is the opposite of dismember. We were one and we were dismembered. To remember means to member back to oneness. And being in that state coming back, so because this is a video updating about what's happened since then, that was such an intense experience. And then coming back, I felt that amazing compassion for everyone and everything. I was in traffic and felt like, it's okay. Maybe this person has somewhere that they need to go. And I was like, oh, okay. So for about two to th two and a half, three months after. So basically from August until around close to November, I was in that state of like pure acceptance, pure compassion, pure love. Obviously I was not perfect. You know, I wasn't Jesus or anything. I was you know, still per my human self, I was not perfect, but I felt completely okay with everything. Okay. With no matter the way things play out. And I also didn't have any questions. Like in a way I almost felt like who cares? What's the truth of the situation when it's meant to be this way, we are meant to perceive it this way. <laughs> And this is the greater good. And also what I was told in that moment on the ayahuasca was like, don't rush to wake everybody up because then the game will be over and then everybody's going to miss it and it's not going to be fun. And the game could have ended thousands of years ago, but everybody wants the game to keep going. So accept that. So if there's going to be people who choose to do wrong, choose to do bad, choose to do something that harms themselves, have compassion for them over the judgment and accept that it's meant to be. So coming back into the real life, that is quite the integration. But in those first two to three months, it is so prominent in every thought, every interaction that you kind of stay on that high, at least for me. Now, mind you, I had it pretty easy on the mat in the ceremony. I mean, if you look, look, look back and see how bad it kicked my ass, um, you're going to believe that I didn't have an easy time. But compared to the other people, the other people were really going through it. And I was not going through it the way that other people were. Now I realize that about the from the six month mark to where I'm at now, which is about eight months, I realize that's because um, I wasn't going to have it hard on the mat. I was going to have it hard in a few months. And that's what I want to talk about because when I was like at the five month mark of my ayahuasca from since ayahuasca, I was in a very disoriented low place. And now I can understand that I have been living most of my life in a very even place emotionally, um, which is nice. I feel like I was probably one of the most emotionally even people that I ever met. Um, but now I see it was really like this limiter that I had put on myself at a young age that would prevent me from feeling negative emotions. So instead of feeling hurt, shame, embarrassment, humiliation, dealing with self-worth, dealing with, you know, what I was experiencing in my family and all of this stuff. And I prevented myself from going down here. I prevented myself from feeling too sad. If I would feel too sad, anger was a better response for me. Um, aggression was a better way to handle that for me. So I prevented myself from feeling deep pain. I prevented myself from feeling deep humiliation or sadness or any of these things. And this is kind of what has made me highly functioning in life. This is the reason I'm good at a lot of jobs. This is the reason why I, there's a lot of the good things that came from this, but this is also a coping mechanism that I didn't even realize I had developed because this all started when I was a baby or a toddler. And so by not feeling these lower emotions, now I can look and see, oh, 
That's part of the reason why I never was experiencing those high emotions either. Yeah, I've been happy. I know how to have a good time. Um, I'm a jokester. I like joking around, things like that. But true, true, deep, unconditional love, deep safety, deep peace, uh, deep acceptance, being able to see true compassion even above when you've been wronged. Those are very high emotions. And I was not able to access those because I was cutting off my bottom line. Me not understanding I was doing this, of course. These are coping mechanisms that I developed as a child and believed was my personality. And so I felt these high highs of the ayahuasca. I did not know until now that then I was going to feel the equal but opposite uh, low lows because I opened that threshold beyond this safe, acceptable, even feelings to have, you know, and that's why I want to talk a bit about the integration process, because on one side, you initially have the integration of integrating, integrating the higher stuff, the pure love, the unconditional understanding, the compassion, integrating that is also not easy because then you're like in traffic or someone's being an asshole or people are leaving nasty comments and you want to go back to your old ways of how you would want to react towards that. But then you're like, oh, but I already experienced all of this oneness and know that this is all part of a greater purpose. And even though I knew those things through my research, I never felt it in my heart. I knew I believed it in my heart, but the overwhelming feeling of love, compassion, acceptance for both myself, for others, for the way things are, like that was new. But now the opposite but equal negative emotions are deep pain, deep Sorrow, you know, things like that are very like just because you accept the reason why things might be happening on the bigger purpose doesn't mean that you get to be exempt from the human feelings of going through those things. And so that's the other side of the integration that I haven't heard people talk about when it comes to ayahuasca is it's hard to adjust and I feel like someone more for like me, if you're someone, I don't know, maybe a water sign, maybe you're a Pisces and you have a lot of emotions all the time. Um, it might not be as extreme for you in that way, because everyone gets what they need out of it. But at that five month mark, I literally started looking on YouTube for six months after ayahuasca videos, which is part of the reason I'm making this, because I wanted to hear if any of these other people were like in severely low places six months after. And I found a couple of videos, surprisingly, one of the videos was of a woman that I watched before I went to Rhythmia, her experience of going to Rhythmia. I didn't see that six month video until I was six months in, even though I checked her page. So then when I saw that, I saw her talking about having suicidal thoughts, having in intrusive thoughts coming in so intensely that she felt like she couldn't control them. And this is one of the things that I don't see people talk about with ayahuasca. And I'm not saying it should be a reason not to do it, but it's a something to understand and consider is I see a lot of people. And of course, I don't know, you know, what Neil Brennan said. I just watched that clip and I've seen a bunch of other people talk about it. I just haven't seen many people talk and maybe because I haven't heard of it um, doesn't mean that they haven't talked about it. But sometimes if you were someone like me who was not feeling the full, full, full range of emotions out of safety, out of coping mechanisms, out of developing this personality from childhood as a coping mechanism, and then believing that it's yourself and who you truly are, you might have this period of very low lows after. And if you're in that place and you're coming across this video now and you're in that um, place, my suggestion is don't worry. You're not going backwards. And this is for anyone spiritual, on the spiritual path, on the self-betterment path, on personal development, any of those things. To feel negative emotions and to 
have things come up from your past that you thought you had already dealt with or to understand that you might not be as healed as you thought you were or that you might have other underlying self-worth issues that maybe you were not aware of that does not mean you're going backwards we are never going backwards on our journey so if you're someone who's on the spiritual path and you find yourself in a hard place psychologically you feel like you're getting depressed you feel like you're not yourself for me during that period when it started to crash down so i had about two months very high after two months kind of neutral so i had chaotic good because it was chaotic as hell so i had chaotic good for two months and then i had chaotic neutral for two months and then i went into chaotic 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 dark chaotic hell zone creepy hell demon dream you know creepy hell demon real life and so with that that doesn't mean that you're going backwards this is something that i'm so glad that i'm experiencing this now in my journey because like everything is meant to happen the time that it does. And if I would have gotten to this place a couple of years ago, I might've felt like I was going backwards by feeling things. But now I'm like, oh, okay, I understand. If this sadness, depression, anxiety has been number one thing that I have experienced and it's horrible. Sorry guys, I had no idea that you were all dealing with this this badly. It's terrible. and. Having those things come up, like around the five month mark after the ayahuasca, I started to experience severe anxiety that I've never had in my whole life. And it was like my nervous system shot up and did not come back down for months until literally like two weeks ago. So that's just one of the things I want to say about the integration period is there will be ups and downs but the downs are not going backward and me looking at the stuff that i've been processing i can also see that like i need to go through this to go to the next step in my life you know especially too with my relationships so that's one of the things i want to talk about too is that some relationships and perception of people might change when you come back in one level, you might become way more compassionate and understanding of people in your life. You may become more forgiving of people in your life. You may be willing to put things aside with some people in your life and grow beyond it. Then on the other side, there's people who you might realize, oh, I've been giving this person too much support to not receive anything back. And not that we're doing it for that reason, but you might get these realizations like, you know what, I've invested a lot into this person's well-being, and this person would literally never do this for me. And I need to redirect my energy towards people who matter and towards myself. So that's one thing. The other thing too, is there might be people who, nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong between you. Everything's fine, but you just have no feeling to speak to them for a bit. Like I've had some friends who I dearly love, dearly. Some of the people I love most. But for months after the ayahuasca, it wasn't like, oh, I don't want to talk to them. It was just like, I am not open to having a conversation right now at all in any way with certain people and not because there's anything wrong with them. And I do have talked to most of them now after about six months. But so there's things that adjust in those ways and it could go either way. Like I said, you could get a deeper relationship with someone or you might reassess your relationship or you might just need a break from some people, not even consciously. Like when they call, you're just like, oh, I just, I can't answer the phone right now. And you just need to avoid for a little bit. That's okay. That's one of the things that I think, um, is the, how the relationships change how has spirituality changed for me since the ayahuasca ceremony that has also been again twofold in one level my spirituality has grown so much deeper so much deeper to the point that i trust 
in the process more than I ever have in my whole life. I trust in the universe. After that, I do feel more comfortable with the word God because I always more so preferred the universe. Um, and to me, it doesn't matter now. It doesn't care. I don't have any type of connotations or feelings towards the word God anymore. So in some ways, I feel a much greater, deeper connection to myself, to others, to the universe, to the support that I have, to the love that's there, to all of that. On the other hand, there's specific things within spirituality, within the spiritual communities that I've become completely repelled by in every way possible. Like I have become completely repelled by, and I've talked about this a lot. So if you guys who follow my lives and all of those things, you've probably heard a lot of the stuff that I'm saying, because I've been saying it for the last six months as it's been happening. But I know that there's a lot of people who are going to going through what I was going through around my five, six month mark of the ayahuasca journey, who I literally needed to find these videos of people saying like, oh yeah, my thoughts have been out of control and I'm having intrusive thoughts right now. I needed that little bit of grounding in that to, because I had never felt those ways. Thankfully, mine was not as bad as hers. Um, but I was having a lot of anxiety. I've never had anxiety. Like other times in my life when I've had anxiety, I just be like, oh gosh, I feel like I can't breathe for some reason. Oh, well, let me just keep doing what I'm doing and just pretend it doesn't happen. And then it would just go away. You know, um, then I had no choice. It was like the layer of numbness had been removed from me so that I could reach those high highs. But then that layer of numbness has brought me to those low lows as well. And so my spirituality changed because some specific things within spirituality no longer resonate. Specifically, uh, a lot of people in the spiritual spaces. Whereas before, you guys know, I really loved to feature a lot of different writers, researchers, space program people, all of these different things. I liked to feature a lot of different people's work together and compile all of the different information from different people and see what resonates. Now, this seeking outside it's so different for me that I already know that all the, and I did know on a level from being immersed in this information that all of the answers were inside of me, but it wasn't until then that I was able to truly find all of the answers inside of me. And they're so simple. I've made it so complicated with all of the stuff that I share. And I do still love those things. And most of those topics I still believe in. Like, I'm never going to not believe in aliens, guys. Like, I'm never going to not believe in UFOs. I literally had my UFO experience as a kid and through hypnosis found out that that was probably an abduction. I'm never going to go back on that because that was my lived experience that I saw with my own physical eyes and all of my siblings, five other people all saw as well and have the same story. So like, I'm not saying that I don't believe in a lot of the fundamental things that I've believed in. Specifically, these figureheads in these spaces, I came back and I saw them as sociopaths. Like, I literally saw these people as demented crooks. Like, and that was very troubling for those first couple months, that's what I was going through. So I was feeling the high highs of those first two to three months. But in those two months of that high high, this underbelly of, oh my God, this whatever secret space program person or um, this secret space program person or this uh, spiritual channeler or this healer or this psychic a lot of them I was not into, but the ones that I was into, um, I came back and was like, ew, what? How did I not see this energy on this person of deception and manipulation and things that I still believe in, my confirmation bias of wanting those things to be true, which I believe that they are, blinded me to trust a lot of these people's information and also a lot of these people steal information 
from other people who had real experiences. So that's why some of their information resonates. But so that's something that's changed in me spiritually. So one, I don't have as many questions. I don't need to know what's going to happen with the eclipse. What's going to happen with this? What's going to happen with that? What's happening with the Illuminati? What's happening with this? What's happening with that? It's because everything that's meant to happen is happening exactly perfect the way that it is. Like the whole reason I went to Rhythmia was because I had an insecure feeling when I was at an event that the founder, Jerry, was speaking at. Jerry and some other people were speaking about spirituality at this event. I've talked about this before, and I was working at the event, not as JK Ultra. I was working at the event assisting the event planner because sometimes I do that on the side. And so I was at that event to be working for the event planner, and I was making sure that the dinner was coming out at the right time during the lecture. So they were bringing the food out during the lecture. I was monitoring that. And I'm watching, you know, the food come out, we're timing that everything's fine. And I was just like kind of spiraling to myself in my head of like, I don't want to be here in this way. I want to be here sitting at the table. I want to be here sitting, speaking on stage right now. I want to be here in a different capacity. I don't want to be here with the event planner, making sure that the food is coming out on time. And not that there's anything wrong with that because it's work, work is fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with it, but I was that salty feeling in me that I felt like, damn, I want to be there. I want to be like these people. Why am I here and not there? That feeling is what provoked me to then go home and reach out to that founder of Rhythmia, which then his assistant responded and said that she is a fan of my work and that they would like to invite me there. So that little negative feeling of me feeling like, oh, I feel not good enough right now, that feeling was essential for me to receive this healing. So those negative feelings, those negative thoughts, that depression, that shadow work, that anxiety that comes up, it is meant to happen, but it's up to you and your free will how you do it. And did I know that the right thing to do was to reach out to him? No, I just felt like I wanted something to feel better about feeling kind of like, damn, why am I still having to be dealing with the catering? which I've done. And they're like, I said, there's nothing wrong with it. It was just, that was the feelings that were coming up in me. But that feeling was actually a miracle, which led me to be able to go and experience Rhythmia. And, you know, it wasn't like Rhythmia sought me out to have me come there. It was just the way that it ended up happening because I was working at that event that night. And the event was like a very prestigious event. So I think that also helped that, you know, I was in that setting at that time, I would never have reached out. So with that, you know, coming back to if you're feeling any type of way, any type of negative way about anywhere in your healing journey, let's say this has nothing to do with ayahuasca, nothing to do with any plant medicines of any sort. You're just in your spiritual journey. And right now the shadow work is coming up for everybody. So the shadow work is intense, like crazy. I feel my shadow work has been disgustingly intense, um, that I'm freaking barely holding on, but I do feel that I experienced all of that extreme anxiety. I experienced some depression. I experienced dark, dark shadow work that literally kind of kind of traumatized my best friend in the process, I feel. We haven't really talked about that, so it's funny. I still have to confirm with her. But I didn't want to dissect of how it impacted her, too, because I know that it's hard when you care about someone to have all of these things come up in them. But all of that, even if you're doing this and you're in this spiritual path and you're in a very low point, you're experiencing a lot of anxiety, your childhood trauma is coming up, you're reassessing the things in your life, the decisions you've made, the, everything that has led you up to this point, it is not moving backwards. It is actually integrating all of the new knowledge 
And finally, that integration is not on the surface level. It's not in your head. It drops to the heart. And after it's in the heart, then it really gets in. I thought I wanted to open up my heart. I didn't realize that once you let it in your heart, it goes to the whole body. And that's where I discovered um, this very dark uh, shadow work journey, which I talked about on my sub stack. I still have a lot more to say about it because I've been through a lot since then. I'm not going to get all the way in it because I tell the whole story on my sub stack. So, and it's long, but basically I realized in February. So that's six months after around that five month part, I was not feeling okay. I was feeling something is very off. I'm having anxiety. I'm feeling not myself. I don't feel like myself right now. And I've never felt this way because I have been like this, this type of personality since I was a child. And I'm nicer now because I've learned more compassion and more understanding. But I have been this kind of forward, direct way always. And I realized my own inner demons have been here the whole time. And... I thought, and I know this is real shadow work, right? This is real shadow work because Carl Jung has the diagram where the center is the self. The self is like your soul, your real true identity outside of this, beyond this, the soul, the identity that is in every single life you've ever lived. That's the self. On the most outer level, we have the persona. So we all have these different personas, your work persona, your friend persona, your store persona, like whatever. We have all these different personas, you know, sometimes people say, oh, my customer service voice or, you know, things like this. We have these different personas that we know that work for us. Um, we know that allow us to better function in society. Sometimes those personas are rebellious that make it harder for us to be in society. Like I had green hair for a long time. I had green hair for four years. I used to shave off my eyebrows. I had piercings. I did all the stuff. And then around 18, 19, I was like, it's very hard to operate in society this way. And that's when I more so was like, okay, well, I should just look more like my natural self. And I'm weird. I'm crazy. I mean... I'm going to be weird and crazy, even if I look like Miss Plain Jane. And but I realized that it's easier to have blonde hair and be more neutral and presentable and stuff, because one, I don't have to prove to anyone that I'm different or interesting. That comes from within. So that was something that I went through when I was from a teenager to an adult of like, why do I need people to know that I'm different? Who cares if they know? In fact, it works better for me for them to think I'm similar to them. And if I trust them, let them know that I'm different and weird. And that was also a persona that has adjusted and found its way over time. Because it looks, it's been much easier for me to present myself looking like this than when I presented myself looking how I thought I felt. You know, because I was always, I felt like an alien, a mantis. People used to call me a praying mantis in high school because I literally looked like one. I looked like a freaking green alien. So, you know, but with all of that said, the real shadow work. So we have these personas. We have the self on the most outer level, the persona, the most outer level of the unconscious. That's the conscious mind, the most outer level of the Subconscious mind is the anima and the animus, who this is kind of your, the masculinity within women and then the femininity within men. This is the unconscious side of the persona. But then on that middle between the outer persona and the self is the ego. But the ego we are conscious of. We know what the ego is and not in like ego is bad way. Ego in just simple neutral definition is I'm Jen. Myself is this soul. My persona is these different things, JK Ultra, this, that, whatever. And then in between that is the ego, which is my, what I believe to be my true self in this life. So like Jen, Jennifer Carmody, this is the ego. 
You know, this is who I believe I am in this life. And on the opposite side of the ego, so that's in the conscious mind. In the unconscious mind, the equal of the ego is the shadow. And the shadow I believed was kind of our negative qualities, the things we didn't like about ourselves. But then I really learned. <laughs> oh, then I really fucking learned uh, in these months after the ayahuasca because I realized it is right. The shadow is actually hidden from you even. Even from me, it was hidden. But what I've uncovered in myself, and this might help some of you guys because, you know, this is kind of the self-discovery part of the integration. And maybe this is something that someone watching needs to hear that I was unaware the level of my self-worth wound because since I've been a baby, a toddler, I have acted in a way that shows a lot of self-respect and self-worth. Like if you guys know, I've talked a little bit about like my relationship with my father. Um, and we just did not get along. It was always troubled, our relationship. And then when I was 16, I was basically like, you know what? This isn't going to work. Let's never talk again because, you know, basically respect me. There's no reason for you to be in my life or me to be in your life if we don't have a mutual anything towards each other. Called it quits. So I have acted in my life time and time again. If someone wrongs me, betrays me, I'm like, you're done. You're out of my life. And I've been that way so harshly since I was younger that I've acted in a way that shows a lot of self-worth. I've acted in a way I've, and those things were genuine. I genuinely felt those ways in those, all of those situations. I, that was genuinely how I felt. And I reacted to my genuine feelings and took action based on that. Now through this deep integration of the ayahuasca, and then the low lows of the equivalent to those high highs, I realized, wow, this self-worth wound is even a secret from me. I didn't even realize the level because I constantly take action in my life, which shows me otherwise, which has even convinced me that I have a higher self-worth than I actually do because my actions show it. I believe it. I know it. But it is truly invisible to yourself, the real deep, deep, deep shadow work. Because it wasn't that I don't think I'm good or something like that. It goes to the core is where did this come from? Where did this originate? And it originates in my childhood where, you know, now I've been able to sit with it for months now. Oh, I've been rotting. I feel like I've been rotting for like three, four months, to be honest with you, especially since February to now, which is April 17th, as I'm recording this, I feel like I was rotting to death. Um, but I knew the greater purpose that everything is always working for the highest good. Everything is always and then I see too that even me going through these like deep levels of self-worth evaluation is setting me up for the next stage of my life because there is a reason why I've attracted and been attracted to so many relationships that were not for me, that were not aligned for me, that were not right for me. And you know, they say that you attract what you are, but that never made sense to me. How could I be attracting these people they're not like me. There was actually something very beneath that, that now I can see was inside of me. And this is why I've dated a lot of sex addicts and alcoholics, because the addiction tendency, the addiction is coming from the self-worth. And these are coping mechanisms from the self-worth wound. So then I realized, I'm like, I have a lot of different success with my online life. Um, like I said, you know, financially, I'm not there. But um, in other ways, the success has been amazing because it's so many people that not only are being helped by the information that I'm sharing, but then also communicating that back to me, communicating their gratitude back to me for helping them 
understand this information, for helping them uh, dissect a difficult topic. But why? That's what helped me to then start to see like, oh, this is a self-worth issue because why do I need a million people to tell me that I did a good job and still not really feel that much about it? Like this has been such crazy success of having different followers and getting to meet people that I've looked up to, getting to be peers with people who I once was fans of. And at the same time, I don't feel super happy about it. Not that I feel sad about it. I just don't feel that much about it. And I'm like, why? You know, and then I'm like, oh, there is this deep self-worth wound. And now that I've really been able to acknowledge it and where it comes from, and I know I forgave my parents and my family and everything. And that's a thing too. What I talk about in my sub stack is that just be, it's not like a science fiction movie where you kill the Godhead and everything goes back to perfect town. It's not like a sci-fi movie. You can kill the Godhead. I can forgive my dad. I can forgive people in my life. Just because I forgave them doesn't mean that every decision I made for the last 35 years because of that feeling is now fixed. That's the thing too. Like a lot of the stuff in the healing space talks about like basically, oh, once you remember the past life, you're healed. Once you acknowledge the thing, you're healed. And it's bullshit. And that's something that I've always struggled with because I understand a lot of these things at a younger age. Like at 16 years old, I had the knowledge to be like, you know what, this relationship with my dad is not serving me. And I don't want him to have any more impression on me or how I feel. It did not fix the issue to acknowledge it then. For some people that is enough right now is acknowledging it is the big breakthrough and then they get to move on to the next step. But if you really do continue to go down the healing path and the self development path, you'll see that it becomes more clever, the lessons, the issues become more clever and those things are way, way, way deep, more hidden. So with that said, um, you know, these are a lot of things that I've realized about myself and, you know, not that they're, I don't feel bad or like this is wrong. And I've been genuine to myself in all of this process, but there was a part of myself that was not even like thinking about the self-worth wound, which really kind of is like also connected to like feeling unlovable and feeling like you were not loved by your family. So then you kind of operate that way in the world. And for me, you know, I mean, I know I'm a Leo, so I know part of it is the Leo, but I am someone who is extremely social, extremely, um, I have a lot of friends. I have a lot of acquaintances. I, I do network with a lot of different people. I am generally likable and easy to meet people and easy to make friends. And even like part of that, which is a good quality, you know, to really go back to the origin is like, well, is it because I didn't feel lovable as a kid? And not that I did things from that because it was literally a freaking secret from me. Dissecting this stuff has been a mind fuck because my heart knows that like, oh, there is this deep pain that has been hidden and shut off and numbed that now I know is there, but my mind still doesn't even want to accept it. It's like, uh, no, I think we're good. I don't think we have a self-worth issue. Um, I think we know we're lovable. I think we know that people like us. Um, and these are things that I don't even think about. Like, I'm not one of these people who are like, oh, they hate me. I don't even have those thoughts. If someone, if I think someone hates me, they probably do. They probably do, because I know it's a very Leo quality to think everybody likes us. And if they don't like us, they're probably jealous is a very Leo quality. But uh, that is also a coping mechanism. So these are the things is it's not even like deconstructing bad things. I think that's the other part of integrating the information is that like being sociable and extroverted and having friends and being a good friend to a lot of people is not a bad quality. The shadow work is what developed in me 
And this doesn't mean that you need to get rid of those things. It's just having the compassion for yourself that felt it needed that. That's the big thing. It's not like I want to lose all these great qualities that I developed as coping mechanisms to get by because I love that I'm a doer. I love that I'm not easily ruffled by things. However, the part of me that felt that was the only way to survive does need love and acknowledgement and help and needs to allow those feelings, even if they're 35 years old, allow those feelings to exist without being shunned away, without saying, no, what do you mean? I'm fucking great. What do you mean? I don't have a self-worth issue to not be dismissed, to not be sent away. So these are the things that I've been fucking dealing with. Um, so it hasn't been easy. Um, now I also believe that this is all part of the greater thing because, um, I'm not someone who really has the relationship stuff in the forefront of my life. Um, even in my past relationships, it was not the forefront of my life. Um, not to say anything about those people because, you know, most of them I was very in love with, but, um, I realize without really getting to the core of all of this. And I thought this is where I was at like a standstill. I felt like I've already done so much work. I can't keep doing all this self work to get a good man when these men ain't even doing nothing. Like, no, I'm going to do all this self work to what? Get someone that refuses to no. And I would also sometimes say like, how do we, how are we reflecting what we are when I never cheated on anyone? I'm not lying and deceiving people, but why do I keep attracting cheaters? Yes, I know men as a whole kind of have this biological tendency to think that they need to spread their seed. Um, gross. Um, but so there is that aspect of it, but allegedly not all men are cheaters. So with that, I'm like, well, then how am I attracting these people? If this is something that I've never thought was acceptable, would never do to a person, have left every single time that this has happened. And I'm like, how could I be reflecting myself and I'm getting a fucking shit bag. And then these shitty men are reflecting back and getting these amazing women who are so caring and compassionate. And, and I'm like, this isn't making sense. Now that I've gone into the depths of hell for the last couple months, um, I actually do see it now. I actually do because women were, e were better at hiding it even from ourselves. And that's what I think it comes down to is these people who are in sex addiction or in uh, you know, they're in their sex addiction, they're in their alcoholism, they're in all of that. Those people are just not as good at hiding it. And they're not hiding it from themselves either. Whereas women, I see now, it is more so our tendency to hide these things. So there is that level of we're being met with our own reflection of ourselves. And sometimes we're like, well, this is not a reflection of who I am. Why would I attract this? But there is a part of yourself that does feel unworthy in the same way that maybe they feel unworthy. And it's all a process. And it's okay to be at different parts of that process. Now, what about the future for me in ayahuasca? So I am going to be going back and doing it again, even though this has been uh, crazy and intense. Um, so I was talking to someone from Rhythmia, one of the people that was in my group, and he was telling me that he wants to do it again. And he thinks he's going to go back to Rhythmia. And, you know, for me, Rhythmia offered me to go you know, to experience it. So it wasn't really my choice because, you know, I can't afford Rhythmia. 
So it wasn't really my choice whether I do it again or not. You know, uh, it's out of my hands. And so he was like, I think I'm going to go back. Are you thinking of going back? And I'm like, y'all are all rich that were there. Um, I'm the poor one that was there by the grace of God. So I, <laughs> so I was like, well, I guess I'm open. And I was saying, I don't think I was going to do it again. I thought it was enough for me. But then I was having this conversation and I was like, oh, you know, now with you talking about it, I actually am open to doing it again, but it's in the universe's hands. I said, you know, just like the first time, it wasn't in my hands of whether I was going to get to do this or not. It again, I said, again, is in the universe's hands. So I said, I'm open to it, but you know, the universe has to set it up for me again because uh, it's not in my budget. And the next day, within 24 hours, is when Solterra, which they have a facility in Costa Rica, they also have a facility in Peru, and maybe others, but those are the two that I know of, reaches out to me and says that a bunch of their clients, customers, guests, people who go to the retreat, and some people that work there have all been telling one of the women there that she needs to invite JK Ultra to come to Solterra so that she can experience it. And so she reaches out to me and says like, people keep telling me your name and to reach out to you. And uh, so we wanna invite you to come and experience Solterra. And I was like, oh my God, Mother Aya, please. I said, uh, the moment I said I was open, that message came, it was like, boom. She was in my DMs right away, Mother Aya knocking, saying hello again. Um, so it was this moment that I said, okay, I think I'm open to doing it again. I think I am. Well, Mother Aya called me back. So that will be, uh, I, I'm still a few months away from that. Now, one thing that I want to talk about with people that are thinking about doing it again, there's a girl that I follow. Um, I do kind of know her, but not that well. And um, she also apparently, I'm not going to get into it. I don't know, I'm going to get into it. But um, she talked about her ayahuasca experience on social media. And she talked about how basically she talks about after doing the ayahuasca, she had all this black magic happen to her and she was cursed and black magic and they're putting spells on her and other people in her life, like other spiritual practitioners that she was friends with and doing retreats with or whatever, um, apparently were cursing her, putting black magic on her. These people, Akashic, they access a fake Akashic records, all this dumb insanity, to be honest with you. And I'm like, okay, this girl seems pretty unhinged right now, um, as many people do sometimes on the spiritual path. But as I was, she was posting these videos of like the time frame of the black magic on her. And I'm like, oh, damn, girl, that shit ain't black magic. This is the motherfucking shadow work that comes up after the ayahuasca. And she talked about like six months after her ceremony, how the black magic started from this other woman who was cursing her, spells on her, the false light, all the bullshit. And it's like, no, babe. That's inside of you. That's inside of you. Trust me, I didn't want to believe it was inside of me either. I didn't want to believe that I had my own demons, so to speak. I thought that the decades of self-work and personal development and research and all of it and healings and integrations and courses, online classes, protocols, everything. I thought too that I was done with that. But some people's ego is so out of control that they would rather believe that all the work they did was done and that this must be some outside force attacking me right now. And it's not like I don't believe it. It's not. And like if you feel after a deep healing, a deep ceremony, if you feel like you're being attacked by demons or entities or things are latching on to you, things are feeding on you. 
I think you need to take a very deep reflection into what is inside of me. Is there a part of me that is so hurt that it is as dark as dark magic? Is there a part of me that is so wounded from my inner child feeling unloved that maybe what I'm feeling right now is not because of someone else's doing? Maybe there was something that was so below the surface that only the ayahuasca and months after the ayahuasca have allowed you to be able to acknowledge and see. That is my opinion on it. Um, of course, anyone could be getting cursed and all of these things, but truly I believe that it is the things that come up. Sometimes it happens when people are just, aside from plant medicine, aside from all of that, they're on the spiritual journey, they're on the spiritual path, and they might feel like, oh, now that I've gone so much into the light, the dark spirits are attacking me, the negative forces, the dark forces. Anyone talking about the dark forces? I don't know what you did on ayahuasca because what I saw on the ayahuasca was that there is no dark forces and anything that we believe to be dark forces is coming from within us and within humanity. And that is it. And maybe, you know, there's dark things that things that are not in humanity, maybe aliens or some other entities or whatever, could have the free will to make bad decisions, but there is no big bad. There is no dark forces that are working for the light workers to not find who they are. The spiritual battle of light and dark is within you. And if you are under the impression that you are being psychically attacked, reptilians are after you, not saying that nothing like that could ever happen. This is an internal battle that needs to be addressed directly between you, your childhood trauma, your path, the decisions you've made from that trauma. Because that's the thing too, I forgave people in the ayahuasca, but all of the decisions I made for the last 35 years from a place of being wounded, I still need to deal with all of those decisions. And not that I'm ashamed, not that I'm embarrassed. It is reality though. I need to accept the fact that I dated people who really did reflect something back to me that I needed to see that I couldn't see inside of myself. And I was able to say that was a bad, that was the bad person in the relationship. But in a way, those people were literally putting a mirror to something that I couldn't even accept in myself. And after, you know, really going through this integration, I'm finally feeling almost back to normal. I hesitate to say I'm back because every time I say I'm back to normal, I feel okay. I feel right again. I feel like myself again. The universe like kicks my ass. Like I just couldn't hear out of my ear for the last 10 days. So when I thought I was back, it took me down for 10 days. So I'm going to be patient with myself and let things play out the way they need to and not rush anything and accept exactly where things are. And if I'm not fully back 100%, uh, that's okay for right now. Uh, it is hard when, you know, you put yourself in this position to where now it becomes your job to create content and these things. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, I'm trusting in the process right now. If the universe is telling me to pull back and to take this time for myself, then I need to do that. And the universe knows that I need to do that and also knows I need to pay my bills. So the universe needs to come through in other ways because it knows that I'm going to do what it's asking of me in my integration period. And I also feel that I have had this super intense uh, journey because I am meant to explain it simply for other people, just like I've done with all these other topics. So that's the last thing that I want to leave on is the long-term effects the long-term effects i would never the the low lows that i have felt in the last several months still are worth it to get that little glimpse of god so to speak to get that couple of days of true being in the moment 
true, unconditional love, support, no doubt, no understanding. To even feel that for a minute is worth all of the negative feelings that then might come up from the things that you've been putting down. So it's not like, oh, the ayahuasca, like whatever. Some people think that they got like possessed from ayahuasca. I've heard some crazy stories like that. It was there. It was there already. It was there the whole time. The thing that you think that is a demon is a part of you and it has been there for so long that you can't even recognize it being you because it has been there always. So uh, with that, anyone who comes across this video uh, and you're in your integration period of ayahuasca, don't let this scare you, please. It's not gonna be this way for everybody. I, like I said, I had it very easy on the mat. The people who had it harder on the mat are easier right now. So it's any which way that this can play out in the way that's right for you. And I think for me, it was important for me to have a really good loving experience in the ayahuasca and for the couple months after for me to be able to truly trust in this part of the process, which is the lows, but it's okay because I've been here forever. I've been in the middle ground of emotions forever. And that's not a way to live. And the reason why I haven't recognized myself, not physically, although sometimes physically, sometimes I see myself in photos and I'm like, that doesn't even feel like me. Um, even though, like I'm saying now, I feel like I'm back to more normal. But, um, you know, part of the reason why I am feeling not myself is because I'm deconstructing all of these things that I thought made me who I am. I thought that my qualities, my traits, my way of operating, my actions that I take, my reactions that I have were me. I believed that my personality was me. And that's where you go to that deep shadow work, which is the ego, which I thought was me. And then the deep shadow work of the things that I thought could never be me in a million years never could be me to acknowledge this is not me it's a part of me and to acknowledge that this is also a part of me something that i that both things the good bad and the ugly are both actually not you at all but to feel it on a deeper level these are concepts these are not new concepts i've been immersed in these concepts but only in my mind, only as a thought, only as a concept, as an understanding. When all of this stuff dropped to the heart, it's a different feeling. So these are maybe not new concepts to you. They were not new concepts to me. The understanding has gone from under understanding to what, you know, all the corny people say, inner standing. Uh, so with that, good luck on your journey, guys. I hope that you have, um, an incredible healing journey. If you've done plant medicine, if you haven't, if you want to, if you're in your integration, uh, this is also part of the process and, um, it's not something to run away from because I already know through this reflection and through this shadow work, I don't think I'm ever going to end up in a relationship that it mirrors any of the past relationships I've ever had because I'm that person, the personality that I have been is getting deconstructed. The shadow self is being integrated. And now I think that's why when I came back, the first way that I saw it was in the spiritual figures that I like, the people who... I follow their work or read their books or watched their shows or went to their events. That was where I saw it first was, oh, that energy in them, it's deceptive. I couldn't see how deceptive it was before because it was communicating with my mind. All of the things I know about consciousness, about reincarnation, about souls, about aliens, about dimensions, that was in my head. So it did resonate with me what they were saying. 
when that understanding dropped into my heart, which I'm still getting there, you know, my heart is still healing. It is still integrating um, that blast open that I felt for those days and the time after doesn't just stay open like that. Like this is a process that now your body has to do on a normal time frame. But, you know, when it sunk to my heart, I felt, oh, these people are just wounded sociopath manipulators that are manipulating a community of people who don't ask for proof. And that's what it comes down to, which is really sad because it's easy to see why these people don't thrive in other areas because you can't fake being a scientist. I mean, some people do, but it doesn't last too long. You can't fake being this. You can't fake being that because these other communities require evidence and proof. The spiritual community doesn't, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's okay. Some people, the truth inside of them is the proof. That's okay. This is why these damaged sociopathic people come into this community with their bullshit fucking stories because this is a community that reads energy only and they don't ask for proof. And I realize these people were also a reflection for me as well. Like these people in a way are reflecting a similar self-worth wound. The way they're handling it is different by being a freaking scam artist grifter, a scam artist grifter, and they're handling the wound in a different way. The wound is manifesting in a different way. Same thing with anyone with a self-worth wound. I'm a doer, you know? So my self-worth wound is not gonna look like other people's, Someone who might be more emotional, their self-worth wound is, oh, I hate myself. Oh, it's never going to work out for me. Oh, God, I feel so terrible. Like, that might be how they deal with the self-worth wound. Mine was, oh, fuck it, I'll show them. Oh, I'll do it 10 times better. Oh, I'll start my own, actually. Oh, that's fine. Um, Don't worry, because uh, I'll come out on top. Like, that was my manifestation of it, which these are just the ways that we felt safe for it to come to fruition. So it doesn't mean that this person who goes around saying, I hate myself, I'm such a loser, has more of the wound than I do or has less than the wound than I do. It doesn't, it's just a different manifestation of this same energy. So some of these people might manifest it in the way of becoming a scam artist, you know, and that's a different manifestation of that wound. And yeah, so there we go. Thank you, everybody. Um, thanks for joining in. Oh, do all of the YouTube things like subscribe, comment, join my sub stack. I talk very in depth about this on my sub stack. And also we do a monthly class for the paid subscribers. So it's free to subscribe for everybody. That information's all on the free side. What the paid subscribers get is once a month, we do a live uh, class. So thanks so much, guys. Uh, see you soon.